As with any major infrastructure project, the road to the finish line tends to be a very challenging and tumultuous path. And as we look at our project, the Advanced Clean Energy Storage Hydrogen Hub, our story is no different. And what it took to get to the finish line, the amount of perseverance from team members, the amount of challenges that we had to solve, the amount of innovation that was required to get there uh, was no different than any other project. At the end of the day though, as we look at what it took to get to the finish line, our story actually dates back all the way to the 1970s. And so in 1978, uh, the energy crisis is underway and entities are out there exploring for oil. And one of the entities is looking over the salts, uh, over the formations in Utah, looking for salt formations. And the plane that was flying over Utah picked up a uh, anomaly, which was indicative of salt underneath the earth. And salt is great at trapping commodities, in this case, like oil. So they're excited at the opportunity of, of actually finding oil, mobilize crews, go to the site here, which is now Delta, Utah, to explore for oil. And as they drill the holes and look underground, they realize that it's, as the industry calls it, a dry hole. And so nothing there. And at that point, basically all the characterizations of that salt formation, all of the uh, know-how knowledge basically goes into the record logs and not touched for effectively several more decades. Until in 2007, a geologist by the name of Rob Webster, who's one of the co-founders of our partner, Magnum Development, uh, had an idea. He had explored and, and looked at these types of formations in the past in the Gulf Coast and realized it was one of the only formations uh, of its kind in the Western United States. And so he saw a great opportunity here of using this as a chance to actually store commodities and help the West uh, in balancing energy. And particularly then in the 2007, 2008 timeframe, we started seeing oil prices and gas prices skyrocketing. And so the idea of actually using this as a storage hub, as an opportunity to uh, really help balance energy prices in the West, started to gain momentum. And he worked with now the other co-founder, Craig Broussard, I'm putting together a business plan and coming up with how could they uh, help realize this uh, site and this idea for supporting the Western United States. And as they went through, they started uh, uh, getting money in this case from partners now, Haddington Ventures, who helped support uh, getting all of the financial needs for building out this site. And so getting the mineral rights, the land rights, everything that's necessary as you go through any type of major project development. As they went through that whole experience, again, uh, right there as, as energy prices continue to skyrocket for natural gas, they think, you know, they finally did it. They got this site. They have a business plan that is coming to fruition. Uh, all the market signals are pointing towards this being a great opportunity uh, for helping the West meet its energy needs. And then a black swan event happened. And that was the 2012 shale boom, which caused uh, natural gas prices to effectively plummet. So now it was once seen as an opportunity for energy arbitrage, now is effectively looked at of if prices are so low, you know, do we really need storage here for the Western United States? So the overall business plan, the entire vision idea, uh, literally within a matter of months, cratered because of this, as we said, a black swan type of event in the market. So several years go on and eventually in 2017, uh, as the team's continuing at Magnum Development to come up with new ideas of how can they use this really unique formation, this really unique uh, asset there in the West. Uh, and they met with Mitsubishi Power. And one of our team members from our sales side and Magnum Development started coming up with new ideas of how could we use this site for energy infrastructure. One of those ideas dating back to 2017 was actually using hydrogen in a gas turbine. And as the years went on in 2019, this idea really gained momentum when the Intermountain Power Agency issued a request for proposal for hydrogen capable gas turbines as they were looking to convert their existing coal fired power plant uh, into a gas turbine that can run on hydrogen and eventually by 2045, looking to operate on 100% hydrogen. So now this idea of, of really using hydrogen gas turbine, again, picked up significant momentum around 2019. But there's one major issue. Where were they gonna get the hydrogen from? And so that's really where the partnership between Magnum Development and Mitsubishi Power took off in 2019, as our teams came up with the idea of creating really a hub for hydrogen production and storage to help not just the Intermountain Power Agency and their needs, 
but also really the entire Western United States. And I still remember actually in 2019, it was uh, between Christmas and New Year's, I got the call uh, requesting me to be part of the team and really lead our efforts here around the Advanced Clean Energy Storage Hydrogen Hub. And if you go back to 2019, uh, you know, everyone in the market today knows how the buzz around hydrogen, hydrogen has all the hype and excitement. Just about three years ago, that was not the case. You know, people saw what we were investing in Delta Utah as a science project, as us throwing away our money, as us doing something that was completely irrational. And you know, again, if you go back to that point in time, when I got the call, those are some of the same thoughts I'm thinking, but is this the hydrogen economy all over again? You know, we talked about this in the early 2000s. Is this just a repeat of all that buzz and, and, and whatnot? But as you look at the market fundamentals, or at least I had seen it, we realized that this truly was a unique opportunity. Things were different today than they were in the early 2000s. You know, we see states and regions, corporations committing to zero carbon. We realized as a company and myself personally, that the only way to meet these zero carbon targets is going to require more than just renewables, more than just battery energy storage. It's going to take decarbonizing fuels. In this case, hydrogen representing a great opportunity to achieve that. And so when the opportunity was presented myself, uh, you know, of course, I looked at the market fundamentals, saw what our company saw, and also jumped you know, all, all the way in on the opportunity. And so in early 2000 and, and early 2020, we started formulating our teams. We had a team from Magnum Development, team from Mitsubishi Power, but everyone really working together as one entity, one company. And we started solving problems that had never been solved before. When you look at electrolyzers, historically electrolyzers were always this small piece of an overall uh, existing major infrastructure. Uh, today though, we were solving for the electrolyzers were really the infrastructure, the major infrastructure. So how do you design a facility where what was once an ancillary product of an existing site is now the main focus? And so that's what our team set off to solve immediately was that challenge. We also were, of course, looking at building a project in scale and magnitude that had never been done before in the world. And all that starts going on through the early 2020s uh, until, as we all know, then a global pandemic hit. And so like most of us in this environment, we learned how to adapt and how to solve problems in a remote environment. But developing a project like this where it requires being out at site, having team members that are you know, working cross-functionally across two different companies really took a different amount of commitment and approach. But ultimately we continue to persevere through that process, continue to work together. And one of the biggest challenges there after we started doing our design and detailed development work was of course securing the offtake. And working with the Intermountain Power Agency to date had been rather difficult. Again, in a virtual environment where everybody's 2D, trying to work on a first of a kind application where you know, entities had never, you know, we don't have contracts that exist for a energy storage and conversion via hydrogen. And so really working with the counterparty here created its own challenges. And thankfully, uh, it was about a year through the pandemic, April of 2021, when we finally had that opportunity to meet face to face with the Intermountain Power Agency and our team and start going through concepts and ideas and how could we help them meet their goal of operating on 30% hydrogen by 2025. Luckily, we had already done all the detailed development work, all the scheduling, all of the, uh, again, engineering studies that were necessary to really put a strong project together. And at that point in time, ourselves in the Intermountain Power Agency chart out a path of, we assumed maybe about six months or so would take to get contracts through. Eventually we'll work through fin financing yeah, in parallel. And we could be looking at it early, uh, you know, end of the year, early first quarter for closing all these out. But again, the challenge here was there was no existing contracts that entities could go back and look to. There was this idea of solving for energy storage for long duration energy storage had never been uh, pursued before. The market need just never existed until now. And so it took an incredible amount of collaboration between both the teams, the Intermountain Power Agency and our Advanced Clean Energy Storage team to come up with solutions and look at, you know, all the different ways we could optimize the facility, how we could look at ensuring, you know, lowest cost, highest reliability, and not just solving today's challenge, 
right, for 2025, but making sure as we go through 2045 and how do we sequentially uh, support our customer in this case to meet their need. And again, their need is decarbonization and helping that asset eventually transfer to 100% carbon-free energy. And what we realized very quickly was that six month challenge ultimately turned into a year. And in that year process, we also started introducing new partners, one of which was the US Department of Energy. And what was really exciting with this was this was DOE's first loan guarantee and project they've been pursuing in over a decade. It was 2011 since they had issued out a loan through the Renewable Energy Programs Office. And while that came with great excitement, it also came with great challenges. So, you know, going back over decades worth of lost, uh, understanding what was necessary for a project like this, recognizing too that with so much focus and people looking at this project was going to require a lot of diligence, a lot of discipline in reviewing, you know, how, how are we going about structuring contracts? How are we ensuring and de-risking the project? All of that was incredibly important, of course, not just to ourselves, but DOE in this case as well. And what we anticipated being maybe a six or so month process equally turned into eight, 10 plus type of month process to get through. But at the end of the day, as we continue to work through our partners, work with uh, our other entities, we finally started getting to the finish line. And what I'll say is that anybody who has experience with a project finance deal, it really takes all the planets to align. You're getting all of your contracts, your cost models, your financing, everything you're getting into place, targeting for really a short period of time where everything lines up. And we had that short period of time where everything was lined up. And I can tell you that other external issues started to materialize. And that day started slipping and slipping and slipping. And eventually we got to that point where if we did not close by uh, the date we closed on, we were really running into a challenge of potentially going back and renegotiating contracts, reevaluating schedule, and really, again, the project getting to the brink of uh, you know, significant delays, recognizing that as we were closing this deal, this is when the world is seeing a intense supply crisis. We're seeing record inflation. And so all of that posed significant concerns to the project where we have costs locked in, we've got schedules locked in, and if we don't close by a certain date, all of that starts to be reopened and re-looked at. But thankfully, between our team and the DOE team and all of our partners, again, everybody persevered, worked extremely hard weekends, nights, and we got through some of the external challenges and closed really right at the cusp of what it took to get you know, to the finish line here. And so I go through that whole story and I go through that background of uh, you know, dating back to the 70s to show that any project like this, and, and particularly ours here, what got it to the finish line again, wasn't necessarily the project itself, the site itself. It took an incredible amount of teamwork and individuals who were persevering through challenges and really never giving up. Recognizing that when you get punched once and you know maybe you see a black swan event like natural gas prices plummeting, or we see a global pandemic facing you know, the team here, as we hit each of those punches and different challenges, getting to where financial close, if we did not close by that date, uh, you know, we, f we face significant challenges, but it really takes those individuals working together as a team and persevering and dedicated to the, you know, to the cause here that brought it to the finish line. So when I say finish line, what do I mean by that? And really it was just a culmination of all the development work that we put through through the past several years, the contract negotiations, getting everything in place and ultimately having the funds and the, the financing for the project ready so we could start construction. So all of that really was the background work to get us to the finish line, which effectively now is the start line for the next phase of the project. And that's going through construction and eventually operations. And so what it took for us to get to this point are gonna be a lot of the same things that is going to be incredibly important for us as we target to execute with excellence. And that comes down to collaboration and teamwork amongst all the parties. And that's Mitsubishi Power and Magnum Development. That's also our world-class partners, Black and & Veatch and WSP who are constructing the surface and subsurface facilities. And everything that's gonna be required there, continuing to work together to get this project into operation over the next few years.